So I'm Mark Denoyer, and I basically work all the way up and down the computing stack, everything from hardware design to software development to process. Uh, my name is Ray Barso. I'm an undergraduate here, and I'm pretty much a project engineer. Currently, my main focus is the avionics system, the electronic system in the, the rover, figuring out what we actually want to run on the system itself. You know, there's a whole list of problems. The first is uh, radiation, or at least a lot of people will say the first is radiation when we actually get into space. Because once you get outside the Earth's uh, Van Allen belt, all your cosmic radiation goes up a lot. So you end up with a lot of uh, alpha and gamma radiation. So when we get past that, which we will on the way to the moon, then we start getting bombarded by a lot of radiation. And so that can cause some problems with our system. Most of the radiation effects will go away if you actually turn the system off and turn it back on. If our camera goes down for you know 30 seconds or something like that, we'll still survive, we'll still keep going. It won't happen often, but it could happen, and that's okay as long as we have a system that's designed to be able to reset the power and actually deal with that and restart. Of course, on the other hand, you have the thing like the landing system, where we're very accurately timing the actuation of all the valves as, as we're coming down and doing absolutely pinpoint landing. It's pretty important that the system doesn't go down then. So having a redundant path is actually pretty important in that situation. Well, when dealing with launch loads, for example, you don't want your rover to have the same natural frequencies as the rocket or else it breaks apart. And um, right now, the challenges are surviving, you know, 9 Gs. There's a lot of effort we spend to actually characterize exactly what those forces are. Mm -hmm. They're fairly intense, and so we have to make sure that the system won't shake itself apart.